people are so so there's a few now okay yeah. so and this is really to do with childhood so when i was a child my daddy was a dog born for singing and he loved all the irish music so two songs that jump out at me is black velvet band and the other one's mrs mcgrath and both of those songs just remind me of my daddy and then one more i say should have when i got married um i walked down the aisle with my husband here and um and it was she moved through the car so that's my that's my three. I think the Dubliners for Mrs. McGrath. I love that. You know, so I do. I just love the Dubliners. And um, I've, heard, I've heard a few versions of that. She moved through the car. I can't. I just can't think of one which one I like the best. Yeah. The fourth song I've chosen on my list is another one of those Irish greats, and it's the Rainy Night in Soho uh, by the Pogues. Uh, Rainy Night in Soho is just one of those songs that it just makes you very proud to be Irish when you hear it because it just has so much melody in it that it's just Irish through and through. You've got the iconic um, sort of ruggedness of Shane McGowan's voice from start to finish but there's something very Irish and very iconically Irish about that little five or six note piano piece at, at the end of every line and then as the tin whistle kicks in you just feel as if you are brought back to some amazing time in your childhood that perhaps you know is something that you maybe don't revisit very often. Um, the lyrics of it then, you, you kind of miss the lyrics in some ways because of Shane's very unique voice. But for me, it's the one of the songs that brings you back to travel and to holidays. Um, whether it's the fact that obviously Soho being in London and that sort of link between the Irish and the English and emigration and everything. but. Uh, it's one of those ones that reminds me of holidays. Uh, I just love hearing it. It doesn't matter whether it's the the piano or the tim whistle or Shane's voice. There's something just amazing about it. The first time I remember hearing that song abroad uh, was when I was in Australia in 2012. It was the first time I'd ever heard it played outside of Ireland. And since then, in every country I've been to, I would tend to play it on a journey, whether it's going on a bus. I remember playing it on the bus going through the Ukraine and just looking out, because Ukraine is a very, very flat country, looking out the fields and just, there's something you don't expect to kind of get. But there's just something amazing about that song. Um, and it's from note one to the final note. So the opening note, it starts off, there's no real massive intro, it's just straight into it. It's just like the Irish at a party. It's just, it's full on from the very start. And there's just something incredible about it. And I think for all the for all the changes that have gone on in, in Shane McGowan's life and in his singing career as such, I think that song is the one, for me anyway, of all the songs by the Pogues that just shows everything that's good about him. And I know you've got Seven Drunken Nights and all those other endless list of amazing Pogue songs. But there's something about a rainy night in Soho that I think any Irish person around the world would just listen to and automatically be brought back to home. And I think that's something you can't get very easily out of a song. And I think it's just something that the Irish are very proud of. And Rainy Night in Soho by Shane McGowan is definitely one of the greatest songs ever written. And it's the reason that it's on my list of great songs. Another one of our favourite Irish songs definitely would be Falling Slowly from the amazing musical which is Once, which is also a film and it's a very like, I don't know, like an indie folk song I would say and well I remember it ever since I was little, I remember that my mum would have played the Ronan Keating CD in the car and I remember his uh, cover of it that he did with a female singer as well and I was obsessed with it because <laughs> that's what I was always listening to as a child. I remember going to all the boys' home concerts and all this. So, because I obviously love singing, I would have always sang along with Rona Keating in the car. And this was the song that always stuck out for me. So, then when we started singing together, we thought, well, this would be another good song for us to sing. So, yeah, we actually recorded that and then we're putting it on our next album. And I think it's just, it's such a beautiful love song. And of course, it's set in Dublin as well. So that just makes it even better. Yeah, I think it's one of these songs that obviously it is a love song and it starts off for both of us in quite a lower register. And then by the time it, it, it jumped to the chorus, um, I think I go up an octave and 
it's that moment of build, you know, it just hits you listening to it straight away and both of the singers have really, really close harmonies and within that you get some clashes and some resolves um, in the harmony and I think it actually makes the the emotion of the song or pulling on the heartstrings even better. Um, and what we decided to do with it, just to make it a little bit different, was we actually discovered that, because um, the chorus repeats three times at the end, but we discovered that, is it the verse? you can actually sing against the chorus and it works kind of together to create this kind of strange mix of melodies going on and it kind of adds a, a really different spin on the song um, it definitely is you know one of my favorite and actually when we were looking for a track and um, with all of the instruments in the song we couldn't find well we were in the studio listened to it and the guy paul who works in the studio was saying, you know, this this track, there seems to be like this really strange creak the whole way throughout it and it's not very good quality. So we searched for more and more tracks and we came back and unfortunately every track had the creak. To them we figured out was actually the creak of like a wooden chair because obviously when it's being performed in the show or per being performed um, by Glenn himself who wrote it, you actually hear the creak of like this little Irish bar or it, it just makes the song so much more authentic I think. Um, but it actually is a fantastic love song. Again, going a bit more modern, uh, this is another 21st century song. Um, it's Ash, the band Ash, the Down Patrick band, and their song Shining Light. Um, so this came out in around 2000, and the, well, the 2000s, uh, just when Ash were sort of, they seemed like a bit of a washed up band, and that they were big in the Britpop era, and they sort of took it sort of got a bit uppity about being called pop music um, because they played guitars and everything they thought that, that, was, that wasn't right so what they did for their next album was go really really avant-garde and make them hard to play and listen on the radio and hard to listen to and such so then they came back a few years later and they went back to sort of just writing songs with blue melodies and this one's called Shining Light um, well it was just it, it was the lead single of their um, of their album Free All Angels I think um, which was released when I was a student, and there was some really good tunes on it. There was a song called Burn Baby Burn on that as well, which is uh, probably more of the sort of hard rock tune. Uh, but this one just had a really nice guitar intro, and it sort of showed that they could actually write songs with a bit more maturity. Um, it's very, very, very good lyrics. Um, you know, it's a bit more, the lyrics are a bit deeper than the stuff that they would normally come out with, I would suggest. Um, and it's just, again, it's got a very, very good melody. The intro riff is, it, it's just four chords, uh, but it's just the way that the, uh, the, the stroking pattern or the, the strumming pattern, um, it just gives them a bit more life. Uh, it, was record, it was recorded as well by Annie Lennox, um, which does show the, the sort of uh, standard of songwriting they had achieved with that, with that song. Um, you're more likely to hear the Annie Lennox song uh, the only Lennox version now, I would say, uh, because that was actually a very popular version. Um, sometimes you do hear it in the sort of background of, of TV shows and that sort of thing. Um, doesn't really get as much play on the radio, although I don't listen to a wide lot of radio, but it doesn't get as much play as, as you would hope. But the only Lennox version, I think, may have got more famous than it by now, but we'll see how that pans out. Um, it's a good song. Um, just amongst uh, the easy listening songs, uh, I used to have a, I used to have a playlist called Hangover, which did exactly what it says in the tin. Uh, it was songs like the likes of Bell and Sebastian or REM or uh, just bands like that who don't who don't uh, make a racket with their music, but make uh, you know uh, get a bit more softness to their guitar playing. So this song fits in quite well with that. So if you're feeling maybe a bit fragile and you just want to stick a song on that'll lull you into the day again, this might be a good one. But that's not disparaging on the song level. I once saw Tim Wheeler at a high-functioning event in London when I, was, when I was working, I think it was the Ritz Hotel. So, guy moves around in some high circles. <laughs> 